Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for being here on the last talk before the beer. Um, I'm going to give you a talk about uh, application servers. Who uses application servers? Okay. So everybody knows a little bit of Java EE. I've heard that it was dead. But I've heard it's back. Okay, so my name is Antonio Goncalves. Um, I'm a developer. Uh, I'm a contractor, so I'm my own boss. And I discovered Java a long time ago and Java EE also a long time ago because it used to be called J2EE 1.2. I was working for BA Systems and I was doing EJB 1.0. I was doing clustering with failover stateful EJBs. And I became so good at that that I needed to express myself and write books. So I wrote plenty of books about Java EE, and um, and I be, and then I became a Java champion. So I've been doing Java EE for a long, long time. And today I I'm, I'm going to talk again about Java EE. Um, Java EE is nearly twenty years old, you know, seventeen. Things have moved on but not a human being sometimes. Uh, a lot of people think that Java EE is bloated and application servers are huge. And so I'm just, this talk is about uh, Java EE and application servers. I'm gonna mostly focus on Java, on Java EE application servers. In 2016, how do we see Java EE application servers. Bang! One big block. One monolith. You know, an application server is something big and it's slow, it's fat, all boring, heavy way. That's something, you know, we've talked uh, for many, many years about light way and heavy way uh, and not sexy. So that's the way we see Java application service. So let's take some of these uh, uh, you know, adjectives. So application servers are monolithic. This is the Java EE application servers. I'm talking here about WebLogic, Glassfish, uh, Payara, WebSphere. Wildfly, JBoss. So these guys implement the full Java EE 7 specification. But if you have followed the history of Java EE, you know that in Java EE 6, I'm talking 2009, in Java EE 6, we created the web profile. Um, all these guys, WebLogic, Glassfish, Wildfly, blah, 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 implement both the full Java EEE plus the web profile. They must. And then there's other guys that only implement the web profile. Apache Tommy, uh, the most famous one. Caucho with re uh, Resin, Siupas. So these guys only implement the web profile. But there's something else. Um, there's also the serverless containers. So in Java EE, we have the full profile, we have the web profile, and that's it. Um, but for a long, long time, we had Jetty, Tomcat, and, uh, and Undertow that would implement ser uh, servlet containers. So Java EE application servers are not monolithic. They're three monoliths. But even that, you know, it's not true, you know, because Java EE is the genesis of Java EE is bits and pieces. 
So the servlet containers, they mostly implement the servlet specification, plus expression language, JSP, and so on. These specification have their own life. They live, you know, they released differently. The ex expert group are different. So these four pieces actually do not bundle. You know, it's not a monolith. It, it, it's four specifications with different implementations. Same thing for the web profile. That's where we find uh, CDI, JPA, JTA. And Java EE is that. Um, Java EE 7 has all these bits and pieces that have different versions. They evolve at a, at a different pace. So application servers, by the genesis of application servers, is bundled, trying to bundle all these bits and pieces. So Java EE is only bits and pieces. So application servers are an aggregation of bits and pieces. They run on the JVM. The JVM one day will be split into bits and pieces, if Jigsaw comes. And this is what we do. So this is our business code. We ask Maven to bring what's missing, um, and NPM. We end up doing this kind of work. So if you live in the Java EE world uh, and the application server world, that's what we do. You know, we have Java bits and pieces at the bottom. We have these Java EE bits and pieces in the middle. And we depend on bits and pieces. So application servers, by design, cannot be a monolithic. Bad things happen in the history, but uh, by design, they aggregate bits and pieces. And we will see that uh, later, that we can take some bits and pieces out when we don't need them. Okay, so application servers by design are not monolithic, but what we say is that they are slow. Application servers are slow. So here, I hope you can see, yeah, it's fine. Um, during winter, you know, I downloaded most of the application servers on this planet, um, full Java EE, web profile, and servlet containers. And what I did on my Mac, 16 gigs of RAM, no Docker, no virtual box, just on, on this, uh, machine here, um, I downloaded them all and I, st I started them up and shut them down. And I did that a few times and I measured. So here you have the startup time of all the application servers. Um, so again, no twist, same JVM, no optimization, you know, I didn't want to dig into XML files or, you know, just you download, start up, stop, do that a few times and measure, check the logs. And you see that, yes, indeed, Tomcat starts up in half a second on the, on the right side there, on the green bar. And the toe starts up in one point something seconds. But those guys in the green bar only implement the servlet. Easy peasy. If you move to the, to the orange, that's where we have the web profile. The web profile is roughly 20 specifications, something like that. I've stopped counting. Java EE7 is 34, and the web profile is something around 20. Here it's quite, quite interesting because Tommy starts up in half a second. Tommy is based, on, based on, on Tomcat. And when you start it up, he does some nice tricks to bootstrap quickly. Instead of implementing four specifications, Tommy implements 20 specifications. And if you move to the blue side, uh, 
that's full Java EE. So if you take the, you know, the best of the best, let's say Wildfly 10, start, stop, start, stop, two seconds. Wildfly, and I'll show you a, a funny slide later, boots 20, uh, 34 specifications plus admin console plus, 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 in two seconds. Web logic is slightly slower than the others. Web sphere liberty is not bad at all. So the first thing, after two hours of looking on the entire internet, I discovered that I couldn't, I couldn't um, have web sphere full on my Macintosh. Mm, doesn't doesn't work. Uh, so I don't have this number here. Uh, I would say that web logic, uh, web sphere full is also, you know, slightly higher. But uh, web sphere liberty is a funny beast because it has the same base code of the full web sphere, except it has less things. So it's the same code with less things, and it boots in three seconds. And here I was using uh, Liberty 1.5 something, and the latest, it's slightly faster, just under three, three seconds. So it's quite interesting to see that on the green side, servlet container, though those guys boots in half second, one second, but on the opposite side, the full Java EE, they boot in two seconds, you know, and they implement many, many more things. This is another exercise, uh, slightly different, because I had to use um, a virtual box um, with Windows, so I virtualize, etc., etc. Uh, so here it's not just the startup time. What I did is I digged into history and I managed to find a JBoss 3.2. I managed to find a JBoss 4.2, JBoss 5, JBoss 6, JBoss 7. So on the green line, sorry, yellow line, on the yellow line you have all the Java EE of specifications, meaning the first point, we are in J2EE 1.3, it implements 12 specs. The second point, we are in J2EE uh, 1.4, it implements 16 specifications, and it goes up and up and up till Java EE 7, which is, implements 34 specifications. So the yellow is Java EE getting bigger and bigger and bigger, doing more and more things. Now, the, the red line is the same thing that I've done, you know, except it's on a virtual box, so of course it's slower. But uh, it's quite interesting you know, to see that many years ago, JBoss was starting in less than five seconds, but JBoss was only implementing 12 specifications. And today, JBoss starts in four seconds on a virtual box, um, but implements 34 specifications. So no, application servers are not slow. And I will show you something later. Application servers are huge and they consume a lot of resources, mostly hard drive and memory. I did the same thing. That was a bit more tricky, but um, I took all these application servers. I started an application server. I measured it with JConsole and you know, left it for a few seconds. Um, I triggered the GC and roughly to see how an empty, you know, this is a completely empty, an empty application server uh, consumes in memory, min and max, okay, blue and red. Again, if you go to the extreme right, you see that Tomcat uh, consumes 50 megs at the most in memory. But, you know, Wildfly 9 consumes 100. Uh, JBoss 7 EAP consumes 350. But they've released a new release, so I think they've improved that. Because I was talking to them many months ago. Um, even WebLogic is not that bad in terms of memory. 
Mm, so, you know, again, uh, there was all this thing of lightweight, heavy, you know, heavy way. I don't really know what that means. I just know that Tomcat uh, compared to a J Boss or Payara or Glassfish consumes less, but not that less. You know. So, no, application servers do not uh, consume a lot of resources. Now it's a topic where I'm going to spend a bit of time. Application servers use outdated packaging. This is what we've been doing for the last 17 years. So this is our application, Java EE, Java SE. And what we do to package our application is the skinny wire approach. So we're talking about Java EE. Put your code and your dependencies in a WAR file and deploy this WAR file on, on a running application server. Skinny WAR because we just have our code and the dependencies on the web and flip. There's the Spring approach, the FAT WAR. So Spring is, I package my code but my dependencies, now I have to depend on Ibernate, so I package it. I need to depend on JAXRS, so I need to package it. So we always had to deal with a skinny wire inside, let's say, a heavyweight Java EE application server, or a fat wire uh, deployed into a lightweight Java EE application server mainly, uh, namely, a uh, servlet container. So Spring will package everything and run on Tomcat or Jetty. Um, so now I'm going to show you a demo and um, I, will, I will use this uh, demo through, uh, throughout, the, uh, throughout the talk to show you bits and pieces. Okay, so what do we do? In, um, in Java EE. So here I have three applications. Top CD gives me a list of CDs. Top Books give me a list of books. And CD Bookstore, so that's a shopping, e-commerce e uh, shopping app uh, where you can buy books and CDs. So what we do is we ask our friend Maven, please package these, uh, these applications. And Maven is going to create three uh, skinny wars. So if I look at top CD target, I have a war that is 5Ks. And the others are slightly bigger, and I will explain you why. Um, now I have Wildfly, so I do, I start it up, completely empty, I hope it's empty, I hope I didn't leave things inside, doing the demos, um, so I can, I can check that by going to, to the console, unfortunately, you, know, you see I had deploy things, so here I have a script, and I can go undeploy, so that and deploys the three WAR files. Here it is. I can see the logs here. Um, I can go to the console, re uh, refresh it. The three web apps um, are not there. And if I go back, I have a little script going deploy. And that's going to uh, deploy my three web apps. That's what we do when we work with Java E. Um, so I'm going to show you what it does. You know, this is a JSF application. It's not dead yet, uh, with fancy Ajax. You know. And I can search for Java books. Uh, I can connect, so I can connect as an administrator with a remember me and so on, admin, admin. When I'm an administrator, I can browse all the CDs in the database. 
I can do CRUD operations, um, a book as a genre, uh, sorry, a CD, blues. So here it's just basic CRUD, CRUD application, but only for administrators. So this application here is using EJBs, JTA, the full Monty. Um, if I log out, and if I log in as a user, Anakin, I can buy books. Okay, so here I am. I buy a book, and guess what? I have a shopping card. And if I do checkout, it has created an order. Um, this list here of top rated books and top rated cities. It's actually um, the other two web applications. So here I have, let's call it a microservice, that gives me a list of top rated books in JSON. Okay? Um, and I have another microservice that does the same thing, for, gives me a list of top books. So now, if something goes bad in my top CD, let's say I remove it, so I don't have CDs anymore. Here on the main page, I will lose uh, my CDs because they uh, communicate with one another. Okay, so here I've undeployed top books, top CD, and on the web page, on the front page, I do not have the top rated books. Just to show you that this application uh, needs the two other microservices. So here is the demo. Okay, I've I've shown you the context. Then I will dig. Three these three applications have three completely different needs. Um, the CD bookstore, so the one with the e-commerce, et cetera, et cetera, uses most of Java EE. Um, I use JSF web pages, EJBs with JTA, uh, CDI. I do not use JMS or Batch, but mostly I use all, most of the Java EE specifications. Um, the top books, the one that returns the five top rated books, also a bit complex. I do not use JSF or EJB, but I, actually I do have a database, so I'm using JPA and JTA. And because it produces JSON, I'm using JSONP. So I use less specifications. Top CD. Top CD, I wanted to make the smallest possible thing ever, so it's just a servlet. You know, the JSON is made by hand. Uh, there's no database, it's just a dumb list with random numbers. So top cities is one servlet. What a waste, isn't it? Um, we have three different web applications. I'm not even talking that they are deployed in the same uh, wildfly. I could have deployed them in three different uh, app servers. Okay, uh, But each one is running on a full Java EE application server. What a waste. What, what about packaging only what we need? <coughs> In a Uber jar. So that's something new that's, you know, appearing is um, let's have fat jars. So we went from skinny wars to fat wars. Now we are talking about fat jars. Um, so let's bundle the CD bookstore with only what we need. We don't need batch, we don't need JMS. Um, let's package the top books with only what we need, JPA and GSNP. And the best of the best is the top CD because it's only a servlet. We can already do that uh, in Java EE. There's all these frameworks here. I'll be uh, using Wildfly Swarm, but we have uh, Payara Micro, Tommy, or Kumuluzi. We can do that. We've been do, uh, doing that for more than a year now. Um, we can take, because 
application servers are made of bits and pieces. Let only takes the bits and pieces that we need, package that into a jar file with our code in it. You might have heard of Spring Boot, which is sort of Java EE. They uh, rely a lot on Java EE, like Servlet and JPA, but they also do other things. And there's others, you know, Drop Wizard and Legume, and we know there's there's other things happening on the microservice microservice world. And here I I want to point uh, at the ones that are able to package our entire application plus runtime into a, an executable jar. So I'm going to do a live demo of Wildfly Swarm. Um, I'm going to show you a bit of code. Top CD. Top CD is a servlet. Dumb servlet um, that produces JSON, but the JSON is done by hand. And it's random numbers. I do not have anything else, not even an XML file. Um, so if I stop JBoss now, JBoss is over. Um, let's go to top CDs. Top CDs, it's a WAR file of 5Ks running on a full Wildfly. Um, so to use Wildfly Swarm, the only thing I do, I do not touch my code. It's, I, I just play with uh, Maven. So here I have a Swarm profile that says I'm using the Wildfly Swarm plugin. The Wildfly Swarm plugin waits for Maven to create your WAR file and then it's going to package it into a JAR file with all the boot system of Wildfly plus what we call a fraction. Fraction is what do you need? This servlet only needs undertow, which is the uh, servlet container. So here I'm saying if I package my code with the Swarm profile, take my code, package it in a WAR, take the WAR, put it in a jar with all the needed bits and pieces. So here, if I do Maven clean package and profile Swarm, it's going to trigger a compile, a WAR, so the, the WAR has been created, and the Swarm plugin creates um, a jar file. Here I went from a 5k WAR to a 32 megs jar file. Java dash jar. If you work with JBoss, this is just the JBoss logs. Okay, so Wildfly Swarm uses the, the JBoss kernel and the modules and so on. So here I, I told Swarm to use the port 8081 because I'm going to trigger several services. Um, so now I can go, so that was top books 8081 works. The same will happen with top books. So if I show you just, just the structure, yes, there is an entity, so I'm using JPA. There is a JAXRS endpoint, so I'm not using a servlet. Um, there's even bins XML, so there's a bit of a CDI. And if you look at the POM XML, I've done the same exercise. Um, I have a Swarm profile. And here I'm saying, you need the undertow fraction, because I need a web container, plus JAXRS and, C and CDI plus JPA. Okay, so if I go to top books, I have a 10k WAR file, and if I do a clean package uh, using the Swarm profile, again, Wildfly Swarm, we'll put my code plus all the fractions plus everything into a bigger jar. So we went from 10k's to 100 megabytes. Java dash jar. Here I am with um, top books. Port 8082. 
And yes, believe it or not, I'm going to do the same thing with top uh, CD bookstore, which is slightly bigger because I'm using J JSF components and jQuery and so on. And I'm going to do the same thing, clean install, swarm. And yes, this time I'm packaging EJBs, JSF and so on uh, into a fat executable jar. So if I look at the target, I went from a 5 megs war to a 114. And let's do the same. So here I'm starting this three micro service. Well, one is a bit big, but what is a microservice anyway? Um, so here it works. Uh, you know, it's going to you know, contact the other services. So it works with Wildfly Swarm and, and the other frameworks that I've mentioned. We, we can do now that with Java EE. And what about multiple apps? You know, we have these microservices that are so tiny, 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 that instead of having one, we can have dozens. That's the entire idea of microservices. Um, Wildfly Swarm pushed the packaging further, and I wanted to show you uh, what we can do. Here, you see a lot of blue. It's servlets. Let's take it out. Let's leave it where it is in the Maven uh, re uh, repository and point to it. That's another packaging. You know, I, I, I'd never have thought about that, you know. But we can do that. I don't know if I will do that in real life, but just uh, to show you that the packaging is moving. So I'm going to switch off everything and just play with top CD because it's the smallest. Um, so top CD, I've created a second profile that looks exactly the same. It's called Swarm M2 Repo. I say exactly the same thing. The top CD needs earned a tow fraction. Um, it uses the Swarm plugin. The only difference comes from here. Bundle dependencies false. I do not want you to put all the fractions inside the fat jar. They are here in the, in the Maven repo. So I'm going to build top CD uh, using this Maven profile. So again, top CD, 32 megs jar. And if I go Maven, clean package swarm and to repo, swarm is going to do a bit of magic. And it's not a 5K WAV file like we used to be. It's slightly bigger because there's the bootstrapping of, um, of Wildfly Swarm, plus all the Maven tricks. But if I do Java jar, here, when it started up, there was this log. Dependency not bundle will resolve from local M2 repo. Um, and it works. I go back to top books and refresh, it works. If I look so let's unzip um, into target structure. If I unzip that, it's quite interesting because let's do a tree, target um, structure. What's inside, it's, oh, I go up, up, up. There's only, First of all, there's some unfortunate acts because of XML, XML being on the JDK. Look at that. And there's the WAR file inside the JAR file. And then it's just the JBoss module system pointing at M2 repo. And, you know, the module system of JBoss and blah, blah, blah. So if you look inside it, the, the difference is on one side, it bundles the jars inside the, the fat jar. And on the other, it just pointers to M2 repo. So I thought 
I don't know if I'll be using that in production one day, uh, but I, I found it interesting to push uh, the packaging uh, a bit further of what we what we're used to. Some metrics about what I've just done. So in the green, okay, the green bar is you go to internet and you download Wildfly, zipped. So Wildfly is 140 megs, the full, the full Monty. And if you go to the far right, top CD um, only uses the undertow fraction. And when we package that into our fat jar, the fat jar is 30, uh, 30 megs. So in, in this aspect, we gain a lot uh, of disk space. Um, and as you can see, the, because the CD bookstore uses most of Java EE, when you zip it, it's more or less the same size of Wildfly uh, because it uses EJB fraction and so on. Startup time. So that's interesting. In green, it's Wildfly starting up empty. So you, you know, start, stop, start, stop. Wildfly boots in two seconds. Top CD at the very top. Package in a jar file starts in one second. Hey, makes sense. You know, there's, we just have the undertow fraction. So Wildfly doesn't need to start up all the other bits and pieces. So the top jar, when we go Java jar, bing. It puts in one second uh, the undertow fraction plus our code. The top book jar boots in 3.5 uh, seconds. And as you can guess, the CD bookstore jar, so I'm talking about the yellow bars here, boots in nearly six seconds because it boots most of Java EE plus our big application. What's interesting, it's the blue bars. Look at the blue bars. Okay, so Wildfly empty starts up in two seconds. So, of course, if we put a WAV file, it's going to always take longer. Wildfly empty two seconds, put the top uh, CD WAV file, and it takes 2.5 seconds. Logic. The bigger, the longest. So, the CD bookstore takes eight seconds. But look at the blue bar called Wildfly 10 3 apps. That's what I've done. Deploying the three WAV files into one uh, Wildfly. And this is funny. Here I'm saying that I've deployed the three WAVs and Wildfly JBoss boots faster than just with the CD bookstore. So I did that a few times, and I wasn't sure about these metrics. So I contacted my friends at Red Hat, and I say, how come starting up a Wildfly with three web apps is faster than only one? And JBoss is more than 15 years old. Uh, it, you know, it's a funny uh, machine, very robust, and it comes with a lot of tricks. So. The way it does is when you deploy top CD, uh, it goes, oh, I need, uh, I need undertow, so I'm going to bootstrap it. And then you arrive with top books, you need JPA, so it bootstraps it. And when CD bookstore arrives at the end, everything is bootstrapped, nearly everything. So it takes less time. Funny. So as you can see, application servers are funny beasts and you know, here I just talked about Wildfly and JBoss, but others do other tricks. Okay, cool. So I've put everything into a jar file. The good thing is I take this jar file, I give it to pro uh, production and go Java jar, you know. Uh, and the, the guy in production will say, yes, and I, how do I configure my data source? How do I configure my J JMS factory? How do I put my database uh, user and password? It's inside the jar. <laughs> um, so there's different ways of doing it. Um, you can put code. So if you want to configure your, 
your fat jar, you put a main class, so here I'm talking about wildfly, but the others do more or less the same thing. And you say, hey, container, when you start, please put a, J, a JDBC driver and a data source with user and password. That's one way of doing, using Java code. Of course, it can read property files and so on. So you can put a bit of Java code inside the jar um, that go and checks pr uh, properties in your file system. So we can either do it by, by code or um, wild, wildfly swarms comes with a management fraction. JBoss has a console, but it also has a CLI command. This CLI command is actually a fraction. So we just bundle it inside our jar file and here we, here we go. So I'm going to give you a demo now. Um, I'll, you know, I'll, uh, I'll stick to the uh, top CDs because it's small. So now I'm going to build it with another Maven pro, uh, profile called Swarm uh, Management. And I have two fractions under tow and management. Let's do that. Maven and now management. Same thing, it's gonna package all the needed fractions plus my code into a fat jar. I bootstrap it, here it goes. Um, I can show you that it's still up and running. But now the good thing is I've, because I've added the management fraction, I can go JBoss CLI. So, you know, the operation guys, they don't use the console. They have all these scripts to uh, configure the application server. I connect to it and voila, you know, I can go uh, deployment info. And that's quite funny. Inside my jar, there's a war. So the war is deployed. And there I have the CLI console, so I can go uh, subsystems, under tow, um, read resource. So for people who are used uh, to administer JBoss like that, it's the same, uh, it's exactly the same management uh, fraction. That's why I like Wildfly Swarm, because it's, it's really close to what my customers do with JBoss. Okay, and what about Docker? Well, easy peasy. You take a Docker file, you just use OpenJDK. So here I'm using the JDK, but I think in my image it's the JRE, which is better. I expose a port, and then I just add my fat jar, and I just go Java jar. You know, simple as that. So here I'm going to show you a demo because I want to show you something. Um, so let's stop that. Docker image. Let's make sure I don't have all the images. No. Okay. Now, the top CD. The fat jar approach. I, as I said, I'm using a, just Java, plain Java, um, and adding my fat jar and executing it. I'm, I'm using Maven. I love Maven. So I do please use the swarm profile to create this fat jar. And I've created another profile that's going to create a doc image. And that will package the war, put the war into the jar and ask Docker to build this image. Docker image. Here it is. And just to show you that I'm not cheating, I can run this image and it will run. Um, okay. But what I want to show you is again between this war of fat jar and thin war and skinny war and skinny this and fat that. Um, if I 
build the Docker image again, it's going to take time to build my FAT jar. And this FAT jar is only 39 megs. Can you imagine the 140? And then it's going to, Docker will spend a lot of time adding um, my jar into the right layer. Docker goes, well, this, I have it, so it takes minutes. That costs a lot. So to build my Docker image, it takes me eight seconds. So each time I boot, I'm, if I change some code, if I build it, it takes eight seconds. In the meantime, uh, meanwhile, sorry, um, if I go the other way, so here I have another image, and this one doesn't inherit from Java image, but from Wildfly. So here I'm using Wildfly plus a JVM plus an operating system. I'm copying my skinny wall. So if I do that, four seconds, you know, and if I'll do it again, it will be even slightly less. Um, if I do that on CD Bookstore, it's much, much, much longer because Maven uh, uses a lot of time, uh, you know, a lot of CPU to package this 150 megs jar, plus Docker <laughs> spends a lot of CPU adding this layer on, on its right layer. So, you know, Fatwa, Skinhua, Fat this, etc., etc. There's now we've been for for the last couple, uh, you know, couple of years, uh, we've been following this trend of Fatwa. You know, I love Josh Long uh, when he says, "Make jar, not war." I love that. Um, but you can see that on your build system, it's going to take a lot of time. You know, if you have all these microservices, um, your build chain will will suffer. Um, if you have hundreds of microservices to uh, to build, at the end of the day, if you do Docker images, of course, my top CD war is 500 megabytes because it has an operating system, a JVM, Wildfly, and my war. On the other hand, the jar is only 140 megs. So yes, my Docker image is bigger, but we know with Docker, we don't care. Because my Wildfly image is already on my hard drive, once and only once, so it doesn't take, you know, the, the Wildfly layer and the Java layer and the operating system layer only costs once. So, you know, fat jar, skinny wire, still, still not settled. And now, um, you need a, you always need a bit of fun demo, you know. I've seen people running, um, oh, I've seen you know, people doing funny demos with, um, with drones and everything. So I thought, what can I do funny with Java EE? You know, Java EE and fun, it's really not easy. Um, so I thought, because everybody looks like they use uh, Raspberry Pi in production. I thought, let's do the same. Let's use a Raspberry Pi. So that's why I took a bit of time. Um, but if I unplug this and plug that, ladies and gentlemen, this is a Raspberry Pi. Here I have my three microservices, and they surely are micro because they run on a Raspberry Pi. What else? Um, here I have Top CD, a servlet. Here I have CD Bookstore, EJBs running on a Raspberry Pi. And here I have JSF with no images because I don't have internet. But um, uh, that's the exact same responsive application. Um, so it's 
at this moment of the talk, everybody claps because you've all seen an EJB running on a Raspberry Pi. And we all do that in, in production anyway. So just finish, I'm nearly good on time. Um, just to finish, what I like about Wildfly Swarm, I've been talking a lot of Wildfly Swarm, but I've used uh, Kumuluzi a little bit. Uh, I played with the uh, Payara Micro. But what I like about Wildfly Swarm is, is based on the good old JBoss. So for your operation guys, it's easy. Um, the logs are the same and everything. So that's what I like about it. Wildfly Swarm comes with a lot of fractions. Here I've, I've just used Java EE fractions. Um, but, oh, sorry, I haven't switched back to the... Oh, sorry. Um, Wildfly Swarm comes with Java EE fractions, as we just saw. Uh, the management fraction that I showed you, which is a bit special, but it comes with many, many, many other fractions. Uh, there's even a spring, log stash, etc. So, you know, again, you just add the fractions you need uh, into your POM, job done. So, what I wanted to say with this talk is um, there's a lot of hype about plenty of things, actually. Um, and when you work on a day-to-day -day basis on the Java EE space, you feel that the hype is not you, is not with you anymore. Uh, the hype is with Angular and React and all these things. And Spring Boot uh, staying in, in the Java world. Um, but, you know, I've been saying that for a few times, but yes, I wanted to show you that application servers have changed. I know plenty of you use WebSphere, Five, six, WebSphere six. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that hurts. But um, one day it will get better. <laughs> when you move to, uh, no, actually, I last week I was at a customer working. They do like most of us have been doing WebSphere in pro in production. And in development mode, they use Tomcat. So because of that, they use Spring. Well, you know, the entire thing. And now they are starting to move to WebSphere Liberty in development and WebSphere in production to stay closer. And, li and Liberty, as I showed you, bootstraps like that. So no application servers are not uh, monolithic. They were never. You know, as I said, the genesis is packaging several specifications. So I don't know how come we ended up with, uh, you know, WebSphere 6 and WebLogic 10 with all these fat things, um, because the specifications uh, evolve at their own pace. Um, package the way you want. You know, I, I can't tell you what to do anymore because uh, we went from skinny war to fat war. Now there's this new fat jar trend but as I showed you with this Docker example, we, we also lose a lot of time in our build chain. The bigger the build chain is, the more time you will lose. Here I just lost a few seconds. On CD Bookstore, I lose about 15 seconds. On big applications, you use a lot of, uh, a lot, you know, a lot of time. And, you know, Let's reuse what we know. You know, I'm, I'm, I like to go out, outside my comfort zone and do other things. I'm a new Angular 2 developer, so I can call myself full stack developer. I'm so happy about that. Um, but, I'm, but I'm also happy to be able to reuse my Java EE you know, expertise that I've had throughout the years and, and do other things like Wildfly Swarm, for example. So yes, you know, I wanted to show you that, yeah, there's microservices inside this Raspberry Pi, because uh, everybody talks about microservices, so I had to. But, you know, if you do a monolith, something centralized, you know, it's fine, fine. Sometimes I think we're a bit uh, fashion victims. And um, there's something happening in this space. Uh, I don't know if you're followed or not, but 
Java EE 34 specifications, uh, web profile 20. We want to shrink that. Uh, so there's Red Hat, IBM, Piara, other people, you know, me, you, who are working in this idea of micro profile. Let's take JaxRS, CDI, so JaxRS for the REST stuff, CDI for the extension, so because it's so small that we could extend it, and JSONP, because, well, you know, you can do JSON. Um, if you want to know more about micro profile, there's a buff this evening at 8. Uh, come, it's really the idea of, gee, you know, everybody's doing micro pro, uh, pro, uh, profile and nobody's doing it with Java EE. Uh, yes, a lot of people are doing that with Java EE. But we can go further and do better things, you know, because JAXRS and CDI and GSNP are not enough. Uh, in the microservice world, we want to add other things and not just specifications, but m maybe new ones, you know, patterns, uh, circuit breakers and so on. Maybe that could go into the micro profile. So the micro pro uh, profile 1.0 was released in September. We are working on the 1.1. It goes very, very quickly. So please, if you want to know more about that, come tonight at the buff at 8. And if you want to know more, buy my book. Please buy my book. If there's 100 people buying my book, I get 200 bucks. I'm paid in dollars, so with what happened this morning, it's going to be a few euros in my pocket. So please buy a book for you, your mom, kids. Um, and also, I've, I've been doing a lot of pl uh, plural site courses on Java EE. And guess what? Um, you have here stickers, grab one please, and you can have a free unlimited month um, of courses and you can watch plenty of very good IT courses on this platform. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I'll be around, ask me questions if you want. Let's meet at the buff and I can hear the beer flowing. Thank you. <laughs>